Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Uncle Frank and I am not a financial advisor nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Okay, let's get prepared for this week's trading starting with the Sunday edition of Wall Street Breakfast. Wall Street will have its hands full for the first full week of September with the economic calendar featuring the August CPI report. August PPI report and the University of Michigan Consumer Survey as the Fed Reserve meeting on September 17th and 18th gets even closer on the calendar. From Barron Sunday night, stocks are poised to fall. But from exec sum this morning, U.S. stocks slumped on Friday as investors digested a weak August jobs report. S&P suffered its worst week since March of 2023. NASDAQ posted its worst week since January of 2022. Traders now see a 71% chance of a 25 basis point Fed rate cut next week. Japan's Nikkei index closed at a three week low. China's CSI index fell to a seventh month low. Oil tumbled to its lowest since December of 2021. At the time of this recording, Monday morning, I've got all the futures indexes in the green. Now seems like a perfect time to do the year to dates before the bell. S&P 500 is up 14% for the year. The Dow at 40,345 is up only 7% year to date. NASDAQ 16,690 up 13%. Bitcoin as of Friday, 54,347, up 24%. Ethereum finally turned red, 2273, down 2.9% 2 for 2024. Gold hanging in there, 252680, up 22% year to date. Oil on Friday, 6816, losing 5% for the year. Buckle up, buttercups, because the shit is about to get lit. Monday, September 9th, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Wholesale Inventories, followed by Consumer Credit in the afternoon at 3, but Tuesday, September 10th, GameStop will drop earnings after the bell. Wednesday, September 11th, CPI, that's right, this month's CPI falls on 9-11. Thursday, the 12th, 8.30 a.m., initial jobless claims, followed by another bomb, PPI, also the Usher concert drops only at AMC Theaters on the 12th to the 15th. Friday, September 13th. Uncle Frank isn't superstitious, but Friday is Friday the 13th. And at 10 a.m., we'll see consumer sentiment from the University of Michigan. Saturday, the 14th, I'm going to see the Canelo versus Berlanga fight at an AMC theater. We are only nine days to the second day of the September 17th and 18th Fed meeting where we currently expect to get our first rate cut. Place your bets. Will it get delayed? Will it be a quarter point, a half point cut? And what will the forward looking comments look like? But that same week, Friday, September 20th is the third quadruple witching date of the year. Friday, December 20th will be the last one. September 30th marks the end of the third quarter. A vital date for AMC fans. While it hasn't been announced, I currently forecast AMC third quarter 24 earnings to be released around the week of November 4th. And I also believe it'll be better than last year's Q3, which was the best in our 100 plus year history. Not investment advice or advisor, just my call. October 7th could mark the deadline for the SEC to file an appeal on the Ripple XRP case. October 22nd to 24th is the BRICS Summit. Guys, there could be some huge, even shocking headlines coming out of that conference. We are only 57 days to the November 5th election, which will be immediately followed by the November 6th and 7th Fed meeting. December 17th and 18th will be the last FOMC meeting of the year. 
at the time of this recording, Monday morning before the bell. I've got Max Payne for GameStop at 2150 for the September 13th expiration. I see 1.9 million shares available to lend in short with a cost to borrow fee of 0.32%. AMC Max Payne currently stands at 5 for the September 13th expiration. I see 1 million shares available to lend in short with a cost to borrow fee of 1.77%. For Archer Aviation, I've got Max Payne at 350 for the September 13th expiration. I see 2.4 million shares available to lend in short with a cost to borrow fee of 14.84%. Some encouraging news from the box office Sunday, Alien Romulus screams to massive global box office milestone, and Beetlejuice jolts box office with $110 million opening weekend, because the theaters are dead, right? I am aware that many of us AMC apes in particular are still suffering, hoping one day to get our money back, hoping for justice. Under the current administration and with the current regulators, sometimes it seems like the bad actors get away with everything. But I want you to know there's a passage in my Bible that reads, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I want to offer you this encouragement from this past week, Credit Suisse to close historic branch in Zurich. That's the bank that shorted AMC. That's the bank that put a 95 cent price target on our stock. The CEO didn't blame Archegos for the bank's collapse. He blamed retail investors and social media. So that 158 year old Swiss bank is gone, my friends. Just like Bernie Madoff, Harvey Weinstein, Jeff Epstein, Jim Chanos, Andrew Left, these people will all get theirs in the end. There is a harvest coming for Adam Aaron, Sean Goodman, Gary Gensler, and Ken Griffin. God promises that every man will reap what he sows, good or bad, in the end. I just want you to know you can take that to the bank because it's coming. In retrospect, do any of you want to trade places with Joe Biden's sons? How about Bernie Madoff's sons? I didn't think so. Okay, this is not investment advice, tax advice, legal advice, relationship advice, or gardening tips. I am not a financial advisor. I will never tell you to buy, sell, or hold any security or cryptocurrency. This is for entertainment purposes only. So I want to talk strategy on the four primary investments in my speculative book, starting with GameStop. Long on August 2nd at 2080. Long some more, August 5th, 1762. I think we can all agree. If Ryan Cohen releases positive information about the future of GME's business development and or business model, we could see a spike in the stock, maybe more, maybe even a squeeze. But if he says nothing and just drops an earnings release and vanishes, we could see a drop in the stock, especially in light of GME's recent rally. Let me know what you guys think about that theory in the chat. Now, having said that, I think we could all also conclude AMC's immediate future is directly connected to GMEs. If we do get a spike in GameStop, AMC could follow it up in the short term, just like last time. And it's also true, if Ryan screws the pooch on this earnings event, AMC could also follow it down. Looking down the road for AMC, I still think it's dead money without a black or white swan event. It's just too dangerous to Wall Street to let it get out of the bag. However, there is the potential for a surprising third quarter. But then we also know Adam Aaron can't be trusted with good news. He may strategically dilute again. And we can also be sure the Limit Up, Limit Down committee won't forget to halt the stock into a coma to protect Wall Street's ass. Now, my current posture and strategy on XRP and Archer are identical. I will continue to buy on weakness 
because I'm a position trader. I'm looking forward to big events on both investments, and I consider both of them to be disruptors, game changers. So on XRP, I have to wait to see if the SEC will file an appeal. If they do, it should drop. But the question will then become how low. If they don't file, the coin should rise from current levels. On Archer, my number one pick for 2025, I will be watching the $3 level. The last time the stock dropped to three, the shareholders defended that level and the stock rallied to over 540 in about 32 days. Because it's pre-revenue and pre-commercial, that makes it a target for the piece of shit short sellers. But the difference here is there's no Adam Aaron to help Wall Street. There seems to be nothing but a parade of amazing news and plenty of potential good news ahead. The bad actors are short nearly 30% of the float. Institutions own over 48% of the float. Costs to borrow and days to cover are mildly elevated. Archer is the 21st most shorted stock on the New York Stock Exchange on my screener. And insiders control 35%. But that's what I wanted to discuss a little further with you today. Yes, I strongly believe the shorts are playing with fire on Archer Aviation. Mainly because it's a billion dollar startup company with a six billion dollar order book. Anything can happen at this point when you have deals in place with United, Southwest, the United States Air Force, Stellantis, Future Flight Global, along with plans for operations in major U.S. cities, L.A., San Francisco, New York, and international. There could be explosive developments at any time. Do you really think the aircraft manufacturing industry doesn't know that a startup company has a $6 billion order book almost overnight, that there are obvious military applications for this EV toll. Even the companies that just make electric vehicles must have noticed by now. Companies like Boeing, Tesla, Stellantis, Lockheed, Raytheon, Airbus, Northrop Grumman, maybe a big fish wants a piece of the EV toll action going forward. You never know. And I don't believe the predatory short hedge funds will be allowed to abuse the securities rules and laws to the same degree that they do with the meme stocks. This is what I sh wanted to show you from Quiver Quantitative. On the left, whale activity. Recently reported changes by institutional investors. All right, so 29 closed, 29 decreased. 48 held, 79 increased, and 29 new. Now look at the chart on the right. Insider trading. Net shares purchased by insiders for Q3 of 2024. Look at that spike. 20.38 million. Quarterly net insider trading by ACHR's directors and management. You've got to take notice. Subscribers to this channel already know Adam Aaron, his entire senior management team, and the entire board of directors have never purchased a single share of AMC over the past six years, but managed to sell just over a billion dollars worth on the open market. Over at Archer, it's a completely different story. Since September of 2021, they have purchased just under $186 million worth and sold just under $62 million worth. Completely different story. There has only been one insider sale in 2024 at Archer that I am aware of on January 2nd. Other than that, it's all buying by insiders. So the insiders are buying, but that's not the most intriguing part of the story. I believe we are very early to the party. And when you go to Reddit and type in ACHR, you'll see just a couple of posts from three years ago. But as I said, anything can happen at any time when a company is developing this quickly. For example, Archer just made their first delivery 
to the United States Air Force. What's going to happen if politicians start acquiring the stock because of contracts with the government? Alerts will go out to people that track that activity. U.S. Air Force and Archer enter into contracts worth up to $142 million, representing landmark investment in eVTOL technology by the U.S. military. Speaking only for myself, if Archer can hold the three level, I'll probably add more. But if it breaks three, I'll be looking for new support at levels 298, 287, or 272. Now, when it comes to XRP, this is the most interesting information I found from this past weekend. XRP lawsuit, Ripple's latest court move against SEC, hints at next surprising outcome. In a notable development for the XRP community, Ripple has officially requested a pause on paying the $125 million settlement to the U.S. SEC as directed by a court on August 7, 2024. This comes even as the legal battle with the agency continues to unfold. So, so far we know the SEC has 60 days from August 7th, right, to file an appeal. But on Wednesday, Ripple's legal team submitted the request in a letter to Judge Annalisa Torres of the Southern District of New York stating that the SEC had consented. This request comes just before the deadline for the so-called monetary portion of the judgment, which had been set for Friday, September 6th. Notably, Ripple's request hinged on Rule 62B of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, which allows a party to obtain a stay of judgment by providing security. The letter further revealed that Ripple and the SEC had agreed that Ripple would place 111% of the judgment amount in a bank account controlled by its counsel, Kellogg Hansen. The stay will remain in place until 30 days after the expiration of the appeal period or the resolution of any appeal. The article continues. The stay order issued by Judge Torres further reflected these terms emphasizing that post-judgment interest would continue to accrue in the SEC's favor. As per the order, Ripple would retain beneficial ownership of the funds, though it will have no control over them during the stay. Further, the funds would only be released under specific conditions, such as mutual consent between Ripple and the SEC, payment of the judgment by other means, or a reversal of the judgment by the Court of Appeals. That said, the latest development has sparked considerable speculation within the XRP community. Considering that the SEC has until October 7th of 2024 to decide whether to file an appeal. In a tweet, pro Ripple attorney Jeremy Hogan cautioned the SEC's delay in filing an appeal may suggest uncertainty about its next steps. Attorney Jeremy Hogan remarked, most likely the SEC just hasn't made a decision whether it will appeal yet. Filing a notice of appeal takes only 15 minutes. If the decision to appeal was already made, there's no reason to delay filing the notice, especially when you think it's bad case authority out there. Elsewhere, popular crypto lawyer Fred Rispoli humorously described the situation as a back and forth between Ripple and the SEC. He noted that Ripple's legal team is essentially telling the SEC, quote, this is a lot of money that we are going to get back and extract maximum interest from you if you appeal and lose. So are you appealing or not? That said, the latest development builds on last month's ruling, which slashed Ripple's fine from $2 billion to $125 million, a notable victory for the company. Despite this win, 
it has increasingly become evident that both Ripple and the SEC are bracing for an extended legal confrontation, a move that could continue suppressing XRP's price. So here's the bottom lines, guys. The SEC has until October 7th to appeal, but the stay will remain in place until 30 days after the expiration of the appeal period or the resolution of any appeal, which is around November 7th. If there is an appeal, that may take us beyond when the next president is inaugurated on January 20th of 2025. If Trump is elected, it's been promised that Gensler would be fired, and that could change the math on this entire situation again. Maybe it's Ripple that should appeal. If it's already been determined that XRP is not a security, then how does placing it with institutional investors violate securities rules and laws? Would someone please explain that? On your screen is the one year on XRP. At the time of this recording, we're at 0.5253. If the SEC appeals, I will be looking for new support to the downside, probably around round numbers of 50, 45, 40, and possibly lower. Okay, guys, last slide before the bell, 6.30 a.m. Central, GameStop, 23.58, down 34 cents, or 1.42%. AMC, 4.94, down 4 cents, 0.8%. Archer Aviation, 3.15, up 5 cents, or 1.61%. I've got all three major indexes in the green for the morning. And XRP at 0.5317, up 0.18% over the past day. Market cap for crypto is still under 2 at $1.96 trillion. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. And please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.